this is Martin from Secrets, the channel for learning about trading and investing. Welcome to weekly stock market analysis show where we look at what happened in the markets during the last week and what we can learn from it and how we can plan for a better trade for the next week. This is analysis for the week that is starting from tomorrow, November 14th, Monday 2022. Let's see what we had last week. This is a chance, the weekly chance for the Nifty and the Bank Nifty that you see here. Nifty on the left side, Bank Nifty on the right side. Look at this candle. It's it's a it's a hammer. It's a green hammer, a weekly hammer. Hammer always has this uh, weak size long either on the yeah, on the bottom side, which indicates that there's there is good supply from the downside. That's for sure. But a hammer always on the top of a trend indicates that there is a potential for a reversal. But this is not a red hammer and uh, not a not a full fledged hammer. You can hammer the head size. You know, the, the size of the body has a little more small for a perfect one. And there is no guarantee that since a hammer is coming on the top, you no, know, there would be a trend reversal. But on, normally, hammer on the top of a trend upset could indicate that there is a potential reversal. So what we can take is if there is a price that is moving below the weekly hammers low, then it indicates that the trend may have got arrested. Similarly, if the price moves above this weekly candles high tomorrow, then probably that indicates that it negates the reversal part. It no shows hammer with a good bullish support and downside part. That's what gets projected, right? So what do we have in weekly charts of the bank nifty is not a hammer, it's a clear bullish can. Some profit picking has happened after it made a new all-time high at 42,000 nearby levels, above levels, right? So bank nifty last week made a new all-time high, but we had an all-time high few months back that was done only by the bank nifty. Even now also nifty has not done the all-time, not broken the all-time high yet, but bank nifty has made a new all-time high last week. That's Pretty good. That's fabulous. That's clearly bullish. And right? Nifty is the one um, that drives the Nifty primarily. So, a lot of strength that is shown. This is an indication of a weekly breakout. If you look at this, we are talking about this resistance of the trend line for long. It has been tested multiple times on the Nifty. You can see that right? at least seven, eight times it was tested, and now it is the second week of a confirmation of the breakout. That you see there. But in the bank of tea, it was not giving a confirmation candle until recent, in the last week. Now it shows a green close above that breakout resistance, trend line resistance or cup and uh, you know, the cup pattern resistance, whatever we call on the weekly medium term charts. That breakout has happened. So this is the week where the breakout happened. Exactly the week that breakout happened and it is close above the weekly 20 moving average. And uh, you know, so what, what kind of numbers we have? 233 points gives last week, and 887 points per record happened in 2.5 percent in Bank Nifty. So Bank Nifty is outperformed. We have a hammer as we said in Nifty, and we have a bullish candle on the Bank Nifty. So breakout has happened. And this Friday's action alone, if you see, it's a pro cap bullish kicker that we have. You can see that it's a pro cap. Look at the, look at the width. Of the, you know, Gap. It's, a, it's a huge gap of bullish kicker pro gap. Right? This gap will take a lot of time to go down. Right? It lacked as a very good support. Right? So that's a bullish kicker. So the breakout has happened really with a bullish kicker can. And here also there is a pro gap. Gap up breakout has happened on the bank nifty on the right side. But Friday the close was not that great. It is, um, looks more like a spinning top. That spinning top is also troublesome if supported with the volume and especially in the top of its rally it indicates there is a potential for a reversal so technically speaking although we have broken out the Friday's candles on the bank nifty and the weekly candle on the nifty you know calls out to tell there has to be some caution that has maintained because both are reversed or the hammer on the top on the weekly and a daily chart spinning top on the top of a rally could indicate there is some potential for reversal but nothing uh, 
you know too much to be worried about uh, if you are taking the action based on the um, intraday price and you will get a clue you know when price you know begins to hover around if there is a gap up that's likely happen on the monday because of the sgx and us markets if that happens there is nothing it gets negated naturally if that does not happen and then price moves below the previous candles low on the daily on the bank nifty and the weekly candle on nifty if such a thing happens only then you need to worry but a word of caution there so it's a clear breakout that has happened no doubt about that with the morning japan what is saying it's it's not a walking on the bands but clearly bullish far away from after a small retracement it's far away from the 20 median of the bollinger bands and rising rising up expansion of the volatility on the upside right so it's the same thing that is happening in the bank of the also expansion of the upside clear bullishness of further up move can happen right now look at the support resistance the levels to watch above for the nifty is 8 is 18458 that's for us then you have the all time high 18608 to resistance upside downside we have 18200 near by lives 18179 that's pretty single low right and then we have the gap supported at 18100 103 so 18100 and 18200 there are good supports downside below that you have the 18000 of course near by lives 179966 be precise so that's the support resistance of the nifty bank nifty coming to that you have the first resistance to take out at 42345 which is the previous Hi. Above that, you can have forty-two five hundred, which could be a Fibonacci extension on the from the previous uh, swing. So that could easily be uh, taken out if the price moves above the previous candle high on Monday. Gap up opening, if that happens. And beyond that, it would it could go to you no, know, it could find resistance. It seems all time how is breach? It's difficult to find levels. It could go up to thirty three, forty three, forty four, forty five. That kind of levels it can go. Because there are no levels you now after the breakout has happened, right? It it could give. You can only track that with the Fibonacci extension so far. So that's you no, know, that can go you no know, to forty three easily in a week. That's the kind of levels. And downside, you have forty one eight forty support previous swing low, and then you have a gap support previous swing low at the forty one six fifty six forty three or forty four levels, right? Then you have forty one two hundred one forty one one eighty four level is where the support is. Then after that, if that is also breached, pretty good gaps and a very good gap up, which is support, you no know, difficult to break. And so that's the levels that you see on the bank Nifty. Moving on, the momentum and the trend. What you see on the left side is uh, the Nifty charts weekly on the top and the daily on the bottom. Right side you have bank bank Nifty's weekly and uh, bank bank Nifty's daily that you see. Say. So momentum, if you see. The RSI is saying that the weekly momentum has jumped into the bullish zones, and daily momentum has is showing a beautiful bullishness from the momentum perspective. It is a range shift plus a PRD that has excellently worked. PRD is a positive reverse divergence, which is bullish in nature, and the price moves up in the momentum, dips and takes support at the RSI 60, and then bounces up. That has happened, and almost the target also is met for that. So that's a beautiful example for a uh, for for a You know, for what the charts are indicating, uh, bullishness on the uh, momentum indicator alone. Bank Nifty, meanwhile, has also climbed and jumped into the bullish zones and rising up on the medium term. And the short term daily charts are also showing that Bank Nifty has never has been taking the support of the momentum RSI 60 for long. It is it is hesitant to move, you know, even an inch downside, right? And I believe there was a post reverse divergence on the Bank Nifty also. On the daily charts, and it has worked out and met the target. So, momentum clearly bullish on both time frames, and is rising at the same time. The trend indicators has been having a weak strength in the Bank Nifty uh, or weekly, but that's over now. So the, so, the trend indicator ADX that's used is on the DMI positive zones. It's bullish zones on weekly and short term daily on both the indices, Bank Nifty and Bank Nifty. So. Not about the moment, but the trend clear bullish is up. Moving on, volatility. The India VIX has for the spike up 7.8 percent, and now it is close below the 15. That's beautiful, right? Remember the VIX were few months back, a month back. It was about 2022 kind of spiking up. That's what was happening. Now it has cooled off, big, big time cool off from the trend, right? So that's really nice for the bulls, right? 
but moment this volatility is always has got a you never know where it stops and then remain towards that's the nature of the VIX it's on the upside also you never know when it stops and then you know, when it uh, falls it's, you know it's a long way to go till the 10 11 that kind of level so there is a good chance that it can go down but you have to be cautious that since it has fallen so much there can be a mean you know and there could be a chance of an up any time you know any event that comes in you know, it could easily stop it there and then start moving up to the opposite so you have to be cautious because uncertainty is still there but this is clear bullish that the weeks has cooled off that very positive for the trading of interest the futures are showing that the data is showing that it is long built up as the nifty and the bank nifty that has happened on the fridays number 17 weekly options expiry date you know, it's showing that the put cover ratio is bullish on both indices nifty and bank 1.06 and 1.15 tier bullishness and the levels for that and the options for the next week are interesting 18,000 and 19,000 right yeah one friday one day of trading is over four more days are left for the expiry on number 17 and look at the levels the speculation is so wide that people expect the market to fall to 18,000. Yeah, that's all too far, but a lot of foot writing has happened there. And similarly, the pe some people, option writers, expect that the market can move up to 19,000 as well. Not too far. It's right? hardly 500 points or 600, 700 points. It's too, not too much. You know, hardly two or three days of trading. Can... So there is clear bullish on the, on the uh, option writer side also. The second level of highest put in call writing is here is 18,300 and 18,500. Right? So that's where the foot so support is seen you know, after the 18,000 and 19,000 levels. 42,000 and 44,000 is where the 2,000 point range is what option writers are seeing in the bank of supports and resistances where the highest put in call writing is written and 40,000 and 42,000 where the highest second level of support and resistances are seen where the highest put in call writing is written. So that's bullish again. Now, now that we have seen all of this momentum, volatility, you know, support levels and option, open interest data and price action and all in demand, so everything. Let's get into see what, how the sectors are doing. Is there a rally across the sector? What's happening? What's moving up? What's going down? So IT sector has been recovering and then still not bullish yet. Right? It, it's a wide range bullish candle that has happened with a 3% up last week. So IT has recovered big time at the US market smoked up last week. The short term momentum is bullish, but for the bullish and rise you know, and rising. So that's good, but weekly is it takes some more time to catch up. So you'll have to wait till that time for to take long term positions on the IT sector stocks. Metals also moved up two percent. Right? Because it is having a bullish momentum and weekly momentum also bullish. So right at the end of the metal, metals are shining. All the metal stocks like the SPL, uh, Genal Steels, and all that are steel and all that moving up. So, uh, metals are bullish on both time frames, and the only sector that's bullish on both time frames, medium and short term. So, right up the matter. But auto sector went down last week. Pharma also went down. Auto sector is 1.7%, Pharma is 3% down. Right. All are on the sideways uh, moment about the short term. So, you know, wait and you know, stay away from the land that clearly demonstrates that there is bullishness in on both time frames. FMCG close flat, right? So auto pharma, FMCG, both all these three have have not done that well even on the market. Moves. So, so the rally happens. The reality and the IT and the metal. That's where the money has went in. Is what we can understand. Reality also closed, not too much, but 0.2 percent up and it's still in sideways. You know, it has not climbed the bullish zones on the short term yet. We'll have to wait for that. FMCG flat, it's bullish on the weekly, but sideways still it has to catch up. So the only factor right for the bullish moves as of now is metal. Uh, and IT is there to catch up, reality also here to catch up, others are still in the sideways, so, but, right? so none of them are the beer so on. So that's the cross. The strongest sector is metal, then probably IT if it climbs back. That's what it shows. Look at the ID, right? IT has done a very beautiful taken a support and then bounced up and taken out a resistance also weekly. How many times it is in the bullish zones, had a beautiful divergence and then climbed the bull climbed into the sideways zones, did a uh, range shift the, from the side, nearest to the sideways and then started rallying up. Now it is still a long way to go before it climbs to the bull zones on the momentum perspective. Trend is also crossed over the bull zones weekly already. Metal is blocked out. You can see that the resistance is taken out. Solid green candle above that. Moment price action is what we are talking about. And momentum also you can see that there is a the divergence is there. On the momentum, but it does manage to climb back. Let us see whether it further climbs up or that or uh, uh, 
takes us about the uh, 60 or further climbs up and then after some time takes up about you know, not that. but the break was clearly happened but you have to be cautious it has been it has failed earlier also after the break what has happened you, know, you can see that so you have to be cautious on that you know, metal behaves cyclic you know, cyclical stock so very cautious but as of now the only stock is bullish auto you can see that there is a bearish divergence that we had identified last week and it has fallen not a metal charge, it's a second taking the support, it's still in the bullish zone, so the weekly move, you know. It's a cup pattern breakout has happened, it attempted to move, you know, it has taken one dip and then to the support near the neckline and then bounced up. Physics selling pressure there, again moving down. It's a bearish divergence, beautifully worked. So metal is still bullish, but uh, the short must to catch up some more before this. Uh, this zone has got multiple times uh, tested this level where, you know. In this particular we can see that one two three four five six seven times this level has been tested now it's 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 clear resistance so so be cautious on this but as of now medium to metal is bullish for sure you have to keep a close watch and there is a double top uh, that is already formed and now another double top you know, m pattern also may be forming so you have to be cautious cautiously bullish is what i say Pharma is clearly facing a resistance to the defensive stock when the market is doing but defensive stocks will not perform. So in spite of the US market doing good, Pharma has you know, dropped and shown a bearish solid candle with the momentum clearly hitting the resistance out of the 60 and falling down. There is bearishness there, you have to be cautious on the medium term. FMCG was also uh, breaking out, but uh, it had multiple divergences, positive voice divergences, and it's not ready to fall below the RSI 60. It's clearly bullish, but um, medium short term, there is some pullbacks. So we'll have to wait for that short term bullishness comes back or not, and the take questions. FMCG seems much okay as compared to the auto and the former, now, strategically. Reality sector is bullish and uh, in the short term, but in the medium term, it has to catch up. It is a cup and handle, cup pattern breakout, and handle also was formed, and then it's consolidating and taking its own sweet time near the support zones before it uh, you know, attempts to make a new all time high. So it takes a time, but it's, it's yeah, it, it's, yeah keep, in, keep in mind, uh, you know, keep your minds on this support neckline. If that breaches, then we have trouble, otherwise. We should be okay. As of now, nothing seen great because medium term is sideways. So let's wait for that. So that's the sectors. Uh, sector analysis summary. Moving on to the index heavyweights. Look at these tips in bank charts. Some news of NCSI. Morgan Stanley's index or something has come last week, and then big bullish wide range breakout candle on the weekly is what you can see last week. The Swiss bank has taken out the resistance violently. But now we have a resistance again. It has hit exactly the previous resistance at 1635 marked as we have sold multiple times earlier, and then small profit book has happened. So, any entries would be above this candle high and uh, pyramid portions up if it breaks about the one time high. That's how it is. But as it's not clearly bullish, but if we have to make an entry and if you are bullish on this based on you have to do it off when you get a pullback. This market since it has made such a big candle it may take some time to consolidate before it further moves up that's the time for it to make the entry and not immediately hdfc twins hdfc also has broken out and taken out the resistance beautifully it's uh, bullish on the weekly also above rsi 60. lines us on the top of it and of it and line resistance and then seems to be Trying to break out that, but moment is still in the sideways zones, not climbing the bull zones of RSS 60 above yet. IT stocks, there were the stocks last week. Uh, Infosys has shown a beautiful uh, uh, bullish candle, and but you, you there is a big gap resistance on the upside on the weekly charts, and uh, it has exactly hit that resistance and then uh, halted. Same with the TCS, also, it is breaking out of the trend line parallel channel that it has been following for long and then uh, you have an immediate resistance there so momentum is also not as bullish but uh, on the medium term on the short term it's already bullish so we we'll have to keep it's watching whether this resistance is taken on or not it may take a while that resistance are very strong but um, very good you know comeback from so that is a happened. happened. bank 
never ready to drop below this uh, RSI 60 just been holding on that forever beautiful divergence didn't work out fully at multiple attempts has been made there is big profit booking on the subside there right so where the uh, support has been kept is very clear the neckline of the breakout so for long swing position still I see the bank is beautiful bet right. if there is small pullback and it comes again to the nearby neckline that's the time when you have to catch up even entry at this this point also may not be a bad idea we go on Kodak Bank, you can see that it's a sideways momentum, that is zigzagging and doing nothing for a long time. That's the same thing that it's doing now also, consolidating with sideways momentum. That's it. Heavyweights and sector analysis is over and we are into the institutional participation. So, 6,325 crores of buying has happened in the cash. Last week, we had 10,000 crores of buying that happened. So, money is flowing from the foreign institutions. We had consecutive 11, 12 days of buying from the FIS that has happened without non-stop, without any stop. Well, they also booked in the profit and then you know, they had not been selling heavily also. So, 2,250 crores of selling only has happened last weekend. Obviously, the market no, the market has moved up. Even Friday, DS also were buying. People are buying on November 11th, Friday from FIS. It's nearly 4,000 crores in one single day. One of the, one of the biggest buyings uh, of the FIS. So, clear bullishness money is clearly falling in. So, no doubt about that. Right. Then we decide also net longs are slightly moving down last week that's what happened but yeah the, money, the institutional money and social support is coming in is very positive for the markets. Look at the global markets. What you see here is the dollar index on the top. Look at that. That's the reason why the market uh, you know, is showing this strength. It has dropped. It has dropped 4,000 last week you know, and close with the wide range PR scan. 106.4. Look at the 120 kind of levels that it was few weeks back. A few months back, right? So, why not bearish candle? So, call off in the dollar is happening, is what uh, all over was looking out. Okay, may strengthen a little bit, right? But it's still, uh, no. I'm sorry, there is a mistake that what I, sh what I shown above was uh, the USD IMR currency pair. The dollar index is down here. Right? What do you see here? Dollar index. Dollar index, you can see that it has fallen deep into the midterm uh, momentum sideways zone and it is falling momentum and a crossover of the trend of the beer zones dmi negative also has happened so clear cool off is very good and usd inr currency pair although it is not directly correlated rupee has gained because of that fall right? it does also fall under the sideways of the police zones and that's nice right 81 80.47 is the level where it is right? this is wrong. The used INR data that is shown. The second point, bulleted point, please ignore that. But uh, that's about the used INRs on the top of the chart. On the top, top top chart that you are talking about, right? So used INR has, so rupee has gained, but still above the 80. And the dollar index has cooled off really well, which is support of positive. Cool also has, has uh, fallen, it is not positive, it is 4% down. Negative it is right. So crude oil has fallen. Rupee has strengthened a little bit, although not too much. Right? Um, uh, dollar has cooled up very good. So that's very positive. Gold has shot up. You know, hedge instrument has shot up 5.3 percent further. Well, we're still in the sideways in the medium term, but that's good. Crude cool off. Gold rising. US markets improving. We didn't talk about that. US market has moved up 4.3 percent on the Dow. And this is a solid 6% and this is a solid 9% that you are seeing on the US indices. That's, that's a 9% that you can see in the NASDAQ. So NASDAQ also is where the IT stops in there. There are short of 9% following the news that, that CPI inflation has come down. So Fed interest rates may not keep on happening now as it used to be there. That intensity earlier. So NASDAQ has short of 9% as it will be final short of 6%. Dow Jones US index is short of 4%. So, 4 to 9 percent of big up moves happen, and the charts are showing that it is clearly trying to take out the resistance from where it has fallen. And it is a trend line parallel channel breakout that has happened. But on the NASDAQ, the trend line channel top is still a lot of space to break out, right? but the Dow Jones clearly indicating up more. But across all the indices, US markets have shown good strength last week. That's what that's so. All of the global queues. The last weeks were great as of now it's great 
create for the markets and that's exactly the market is also our market is also doing it's breaking out look at this crude oil you know? it is supposed to move up because it's a parallel channel but it's taking its own sweet line consolidating before it decides whether to move up or not right that's a weekly charge moment up sideways crossover right so as long as states below the 90 it should be fine right global gold look at this shot up rising up in the sideways moment on the medium term the candle size it has directly jumped from one rest, one support zone to the next resistance one single candle one week no big moves on five percent above moves on the gold which is good right you see that now two things for the next week the city bank but as i said before you know there is multiple cup patterns that is breaking out clear bullishness is there for sure but you have to be very cautious when you take the push so it's an entry only on a pullback right because there are strong resistance the upside where it is reversed earlier second biggest deal of the reality sector one of the leading stocks in that it's a cup and handle very very old very beautiful swing trade towards 40 40 50 points can come in easily once the cup pattern has formed and then it's a breakout is happening now that is climb into the bullish zones right entry has to be above the previous candles high weekly candles high and trend also is clear bullishness one right so hdfc bank and dlf two long calls for the next week the nifty option strategy for next week is the counter spread right basically we are selling 18500 call of the next expiry weekly and 18700 call we are buying for the next to next for the far month no call options for the call options this in this is clearly works out if there is a bullishness and we lose nothing no we, we lose nothing if it falls down if it moves the more it moves up the better for us right it's clear good risk reward if you are playing it's smartly to exit before the expiry day right small capital increase your portion size and capital as per your no risk appetite and the capital size right now now that we have studied all the different parameters you know across global sectors our markets us markets you know, different now let's conclude and come out with the view so the view for the next week for me is what the charts are saying it's it's more red bullish view why because everything is bullish all the banks are upside expansion trend and moment indicators are bullish fis are buying like never fix is cooled off drastically below 15 bullish open interest put call ratio data price action is clearly breaking out from the resistance trend line all clear bullish so my view is nothing but what the chart says more bullish so what, last week what has happened it is a breakout eventually you no know, eventually that has been you no know, hovering around that zone of the resistance and it is eventually broken out last week that's the action in the last week and the banks parts did well and made a new all-time high last week now how do you keep in mind that there is a hammer there on the weekly on the nifty and there is a intensive spinning top on the top of the daily so a little question on that but this is what happened cpa data came in inflation worries are cooled off a little bit dollar cooled off accordingly oil dropped global gives up in favor as of now but yes chance only it's breaking out and then trying to take out you have to be cautious if there is big moves happening again there the markets no would move downside again okay. so global gives are there there's every chance that it can cool. No, all these global queues could go out in a day. So 16,650, 37,000 is the levels on the upside. 18,600 and 43,000 is the levels upside. If you have to make sure that the breakout is going to sustain, then that's the levels on the upside where you watch. Downside, lot of supports, gap supports, everything is, looks fine. So sustainable breakout can be expected only if the price continue to move above the 18,600, right? which may or may not happen last week. You know, no. So all time high of magnitude is done, but not that nifty. But there is a gap as already seen in the, uh, only in the, in the US markets and uh, SGX on the Saturday. So there is every chance that if this is the whole zone, there is chance that the gap is happening on the Monday. But what eventually market, what we have is a weekly one. So, right? so that's why these levels are coming. So that's what entry into buying at this point when it's breaking out, maybe wise, but cannot be next week if this breakout is confirmed and further much. So it may be too late. So if you're entering, you have to enter now with tight of losses. And uh, that's where it is. Always hedge your questions with uh, when you're taking out my trust, right? so that you know what you will lose. Right? Protect your capital always with uh, by playing rental income from the cash that you put and and covered calls and all these different strategies. Videos of which, if you're not seeing, you can see. So, so that's it. My view for the next week is moderate bullishness. Right? If if this analysis of the study of the charts has helped you in some way to frame your market view for the next week and your trade plan, if it influences you. Influence in some way or other. 
please please subscribe if you have not done so and share it to your friends and colleagues like consider hitting a like button and that share it to your friends and putting your comments feedback on how we can improve uh, so that you know we look forward for that and thanks we have very few subscriptions and appreciate the help in this world thanks for watching happy trading happy learning happy investing bye bye